We'll move on, Keith, and talk about Manchester City because they've been arguing that the Premier League have treated them unfairly after using Nielsen Sports to scrutinise their deals. What are your thoughts on that news? Well, this has seemed to me, when I when I thought about it, more of a legal manoeuvre of uh, Nielsen are being used like an expert witness would be used in any court trial. And it seems to be that this is Man City getting their punches in early to try and discredit an expert witness. Uh I don't see how they could attack Nielsen. Well, sorry, they're attacking Nielsen because they said they've done work for uh, other clubs in the Premier League. That doesn't seem great grounds for me. I mean, if they're being used by other clubs in the Premier League, it's probably because they're very good at what they do. Uh, and, you know, their evidence is going to be pretty factual. Uh, they're going to be able to point to, you know, the market value of deals compared to other deals. And so, you know, yes, there may be an increase in Man City's for a certain reason, in which case they can put that forward. But I think it's just a classic manoeuvre. And actually, to me, it's showing a bit of weakness in the Man City case that they're coming out so soon trying to discredit an expert witness. Uh, it just doesn't uh, doesn't sit right to me. And if that's really one of their strong points, then they've got a pretty weak case. Uh, so th that's my feeling. I think, look, it's going to be factual evidence. They will say, look, a hotel sponsorship is worth X. Uh, and then they can, you know, they can easily extrapolate the number of tourists that could come through airlines, hotels, those sort of things. All those sponsorships can be pretty well quantified. Uh, tourist boards, all those sort of things. So we've got to see what uh, what they do. But to me, it just smacked of an early, uh, you know, saber rattling trying to uh, discredit the witness, which I've seen so many times on Law and Order that uh, you know I don't think it too much anyway. Keith, if they are successful in this ongoing case, could they demand financial damages from the Premier League? What could the repercussions be from their point of view if they are successful in this? Well, that's that's a big leap uh, to see how that would happen. I don't think there'd be any financial repercussions uh, because it isn't a frivolous case. There's obviously grounds for the Premier League to have made the case. I don't think you'd be able to get any damages uh, unless the case was frivolous, which I, th I think clearly it isn't. So... Uh, I don't think there'd be anything more than that. I think hopefully both sides will pack up their bags, take their medicine and let's get on with football. And, you know, with the ongoing lawsuit, Keith, there was some discussion it was going to happen within one to two weeks. There'd be some news that hasn't been and it's been going on now for several weeks. Is the lack of news worrying? And, and does it prove actually that we need to stop taking the Premier League timelines literally because of how long these cases have been taking? Yeah, look, once you're in the legal world, things have a whole different lifespan and it certainly doesn't fit the football agenda or the football calendar. Uh, and so I think hopefully, as I've said, that this quiet period right now when there's been little vocal uh, you know, posturing from each side means that there are meaningful talks going on behind the scenes. That's what I was hoping for in the last week or so. No movement again uh, this week so far. Uh, everybody's watching it closely because they know how big this is. Uh, but no, it's it's a quiet period, and either they're just all in their bunkers, you know, getting their cases ready, uh, or actually there's some meaningful discussions and olive branches being handed out from both sides. I think the Premier League have probably got a lot more pressure on them to try and resolve this, um, given the expense it's costing. I mean, as we've seen, there's been rumours of the Premier League legal bill going from five million to 35, 40 million, which is ridiculous. Uh, that's you know, think well that. Could be going into the, the the game in some way it's it's just it's just a waste of money uh, and so we'll just have to wait and see but it's coming to it's going to be a big one when it happens so uh let's see if it's a you know i'd settled a court a, a court case with with villa the day before the court case was supposed to uh to actually take place let's hope there's a similar settlement on the courtroom steps and something gets resolved here uh that's my hope and in terms of transfer news, they've been linked with former Everton winger and current Newcastle winger, Anthony Gordon. Would he suit a move to the Etihad, Keith? And what would his valuation be, do you think, in today's market? Whoa, uh, Anthony Gordon, he's supposed to be coming back to Liverpool. That was all <laughs> the stories and the uh, the rumours and that uh, he was an, a boyhood Liverpool fan, etc. And he loves Stevie G, so it sort of made sense. Uh, the Man City thing, I don't see him really as a Pep-type player. Uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't think that... I mean, obviously, he's got the pace, and as every old academy scout would tell me, you can't learn pace, and that's the big <laughs> thing you have to look at players. Uh, so, Man City, an evaluation for Anthony Gordon, I mean, I think you've got to be looking at maybe 75 million right now. Um, he is yet to be, you know, his end product has not been all it should have been, perhaps, at Newcastle. 
and it wasn't at Everton. Uh, while he had great promise, we all saw that, and everybody knows that, and he's got great potential, but I say the end product, so that's why I'm saying about 75 million. Um, Man City, uh, I really, I'm not convinced that's what it is. I see this more of a, an auction, or, or at least a Newcastle trying to get an auction going uh, with interest or, or supposed interest from City to try and keep Liverpool's uh, hand up and, and push them the price up if they can. And to wrap up totally on them, Keith, there was some reports saying that Edison has been offered about £900,000 a week worth of wages uh, by Saudi Arabian club Al Nasser. What are your thoughts on that move? And do you think he will or could move this summer? Is there a likelihood that he could potentially take that money and, and City are effectively paid out for him? Yeah, well, now with Brazil out of the Copa America, uh, I think we may see some movement on that. And I do think there's a chance that he could go down to, uh, to Saudi. Uh, apparently, you know, the talks and the, sort of the rumours coming out of his side and the noises coming out from his side are all pretty positive about that. I've been down to Al Nasser. Uh, I've, I've been to the stadium. I've seen the whole facility. And since Ronaldo went there, uh, they've improved things incredibly. I remember when I first did my uh, my walkthrough with the uh, the president there at, at the uh, the stadium, there was a lot of construction going on. And I said, what's this? He said, well, we're building a new gym because Cristiano wanted one. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, that's the sort of thing that's been happening down there and facilities are improving, you know, a lot. Uh, so I think Edison may well see that. I mean, the numbers talking about, as you mentioned, 900,000 a week is phenomenal. Uh, and so it's hard for a player not to, particularly a goalkeeper, you know, at that sort of age uh, could could well be attracted by that. However, uh, I hear the, uh, the potential obstacle is actually Allison from Liverpool could be the other choice. And there's even rumours of that happening. And I'd always felt that Allison, Van Dyke, uh, Salah, etc., are the players who may well be looking to leave after Klopp had gone. Uh, and so there may well be smoke behind that rumour as well. So it, I think it's going to be which keeper jumps first, um, because they're both obviously very talented keepers. Uh, and Al Nasser are a marquee Galactico type club. They are, in theory, one of the most, um, you know, one of the top clubs in Saudi. They are the, the, one of the glamour clubs. And uh, certainly it would be an interesting uh, situation for, for both those uh, both those keepers because it is a good setup down there. They'll be treated very well and the league is, is definitely improving. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.